Hey everybody, welcome back. It has been a minute. I apologize guys for the long waits between my tutorials right now. The summertime is extremely busy for me. So I want to thank you all for your patience and understanding right now. It will be picking up very soon. I do have an art show in September and then you'll see a lot more from me. So I'll be keeping you busy through the fall and winter and spring for sure. Now I am doing a dotted majestic colorful elephant today. As you can see, I'm scratching it on with pencils so that I know uh, what I want it to look like. Um, but you might not be able to see it very well and I will outline it in black for you so that you can pause it and take a look at the image and uh, scratch one onto your rock. Now, um, this might look a little strange, but I will be adjusting it as we, we go along. Now, I am literally lining all of this in black acrylic paint, and then once that's dry, I'm going to paint it all in, fill it all in with black as well, and uh, turn it into the silhouette of an elephant face. So you'll see that very soon. So once again, thank you guys for your patience and thank you for my new subscribers uh, going up quite fast. I wasn't expecting to hit uh, 35,000 as, as quickly as I did and I'm almost at 36 and I said that I would be doing a live so I've never done a live before so please understand that I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm also very shy in front of a camera so um, it could be an interesting time to say the least I will let everybody know when I plan on doing it and uh, and then you can come chat with me um, ask questions and um, you know maybe we can get to know each other a little bit um, but once again I have I've never done it before and I'm a little nervous about it so bear with me um, and I could use all the help I could get once I uh, figure out how to get on there <laughs> so if anyone knows what they're doing and they come see my live please feel free to share any help you can offer <laughs> so as you can see I did my outline now, the only thing I'm not going to fill in is the eyes. I'm going to keep the eyes the natural stone color um, because we're going to actually add flat back crystals to the eyes uh, once we've finished painting and everything. So I'm just going to leave the background of the eyes there so that I know in general where, where my eyes are going to be. And uh, I'm filling everything in with black that I'm happy with, the shape that I'm satisfied with, and you can keep adjusting and, and stuff like that, but what, uh, it's always best to adjust in pencil and then, and then outline the rest. And then once that black paint is dry, that's when you erase all the pencil marks that you didn't want that you can still see on my elephant painting right now. So I will wait for that black paint to dry because if I don't, it's an absolute nightmare and it's not fixable so wait for your black paint to dry then erase I am putting some wrinkles now that I have the shape of the ears that I want I'm just adding a couple of little wrinkles at the bottom so they look a little bit more like a, a real elephant ear silhouette now that it's dry erase erase You might be able to see through some of my black paint. You can see some of my white rock coming through. Um, so I will be covering that with a little bit of black paint afterwards. Um, but we are going to be covering it all in dots anyway. So it's okay if that uh, white rock is, is coming through a little bit in some spots. So I'm finding my face again. And I'm outlining everything in gold. Now I will list my paintbrush tutorial uh, for this fine paintbrush that I've been using throughout this tutorial. Um, I can show you how I did this to my paintbrush so that it's a little easier to do fine lining. It's actually saved my life. I can't live without it now. So, and 
every time I do it, it works. So <laughs> if you want a paintbrush like mine, I can show you how to do it. Um, and I will also list all of the paint colors that I'm using uh, in the description, as well as where I get my flat back crystals that I'm putting on the eyes and the wax pencil that you'll see when I get the crystals out as well. Um, I will also have my resin tutorial. So I always use resin. It is great for outdoors up to 120 degrees. Uh, you can eat off of this resin. It is so safe. It's so non-toxic that you can literally make little dishes out of it and eat out of them. And it's not going to hurt anyone. Um, so the best part is that it's non-toxic, but it also protects your artwork long term like a, like a coat of plastic right over top of your artwork. So it's amazing and I can't live without it. So if you want to see how I resin, if you want to resin as well, I will leave the tutorial for you in the description so that you're not missing out. So I've outlined everything in black. I've cleaned up some of my gold where I didn't like how thick it was. Um, I always call it clean up. And I just thin out some of my gold lines and, and cover any white blotches that are coming through because they weren't covered properly. Um, and I'm outlining the entire thing in black as well. So you can see that I've just kind of tidied everything up at this part. And his eyes look a little bit funny right now, but they won't. I promise. They'll look so much nicer very soon. So I'm also going to add some lines down the trunk and uh, on the ears so that the ears look wrinkly still once we have uh, filled this with colorful dots. So I'm just putting random little trunk lines, little wrinkles. If you don't like the shape of my elephant face, or if you just don't think it looks like an elephant, you can always look on Pinterest or Google uh, for elephant images, and you can make your own silhouette and fill it in with any color you want as well. So you don't have to use my idea. I'm just here to inspire you. So I'm going to put some gold around the spot where my eyes are going to be. And I'm just doing a little bit more cleanup again, just thinning out some of the gold that I added and making sure it looks the way I want it to. It's coming together super nice. And even if you don't want to add color, you just want to keep it a silhouette. You can add crystals to the eyes and keep it a silhouette. You can do a colorful background and do just the elephant silhouette. So it's completely up to you. So I'm starting off with, um, it's like a cobalt blue or an ink blue and a purple and I'm mixing that together to make like a dark purplish blue. And that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm using nail dotting tools. I usually use the same one throughout but my dot sizes are, are different because the more paint you have on your tool, the bigger the dot. And once you start running out of paint, the dots get smaller. So I don't worry about all my dots being the same size. Don't even worry about that. Just bubble them up or walk the dots um, upwards. Um, it kind of reminds me of bubbles coming up from champagne at the bottom of the glass. And that's how I like to explain it but it's actually called walking the dots. So I've walked the dots up um, up the ear to where I'm happy and then I'm gonna add Cayman Blue. And like I said, I will list my paint colors uh, in the description of the video. So don't forget to check there for all my hidden secrets. So I'm just mingling in those Cayman Blue dots a little bit so that they, they mix together to make a nice soft color change. If you kind of just walk them towards that blue, it, it makes it uh, a smooth transition from one color to the next. So I'm going to make sure that I try and keep the 
the Cayman blue even on the other side of the ear, on the other ear as well, so that it's uh, kind of going up at the same sequence of colors. And like I said, if you don't like uh, the colors or the shape, go to Pinterest. You can go to Pinterest and just look up color palettes and it'll give you a million ideas of um, colors that look amazing together and you can choose from there. You don't have to use my color palette. Um, although, once you see it, <laughs> you might want to try it. Um, but there's lots and lots of different uh, color palette ideas on Pinterest or Google and um, you'd be surprised how much inspiration you would get just from looking up color palettes. So take some advice from me. It's a pretty amazing place to go. Um, and all of my stuff is on Pinterest as well. So if you look up Rachel's Rocks, you will see uh, everything I've done pretty much from the beginning, from my not so great rocks to my fantastic rocks. See, I'm just making sure that I'm blending in those colors properly. I moved on to an aqua color and, and then I'm going to move on to a, more of a plum color. There we go, there's the plum. Once again, I'm using the same dotting tool. Um, I'm, I'm not changing anything up. I use a little towel to wipe off the end. Um, or my paint shirt or paint pants because <laughs> I'm a messy painter so I end up having to use a lot of my normal day-to-day -day clothing as my paint clothing because I sit down and start painting and wipe things off immediately on my nice shirts. <laughs> so if you're like me, throw me a comment. <laughs> Tell me your story. Or if you've drank your paint water before, thinking that it was coffee or tea. Mm-hmm. I've done that. Not good. Not pleasant at all. Now I use like a little vase, a clear glass vase, vase, whatever I say vase. And yeah, I can see my paintbrushes in it, so I know that that's not, that's not what I drink. Now I've moved from a neon magenta after that plum color and I brought it up a little bit up the head there as you can see I just kind of mingled it in with the plum and it's actually a neon magenta and it's from Martha Stewart I've really gotten hooked on some neon colors and I've so far really like Martha Stewart's neon uh, acrylic paints because they're really nice and thick and the consistency is amazing. I don't need more than one coat most of the time when I'm when I'm using it. It's it's great. I love it. So it, you'll see some more neons. I use neon pink, neon magenta, and I will be using a neon green as well. So I add a little bit of white uh, to my pink at the end of the trunk to lighten the end of the trunk. And now I'm using a jungle green, which is also Martha Stewart. And then I'm going to finish it off with Martha Stewart's Neon Green Frog. So that is the last color I'm using on the end of the tusks here. And this is so colorful. My lighting is horrible for the very end of this video. My light wasn't working properly. Um, so I promise you it is bright and bold with the resin on it. I'm going to get a good picture to make sure that there's a thumbnail um, for the for the resin because it's the resin video at the end of this does not do it justice at all. So I'm using a wax pencil. You can buy these online or in anywhere you can buy nail stuff like if little nail kits and, and jewels for your nails and fake nails. You can usually find these wax pencils and they're great for picking up flat back crystals which I also get online. Everything will be in the description of the video. So what I do is I use a toothpick, I dip it in the, the glue, I glue it right on to the rock, stick it right on there with the wax pencil, and then we're going to resin over top of it. So these are not going to budge. These aren't going anywhere. But keep in mind the facets change because it's covered in like a coat of plastic. So there's not going to be sparkly facet 
crystals crystals anymore. Keep that in mind. If you want it to still be sparkly, glue them on afterwards very carefully after you seal. But don't put them outside because birds and squirrels will pick them off and eat them and it's dangerous. So if you're going to put them outside, resin them over top of the crystals. Here you go. I have resined it. My resin tutorial is in the description. I hope you guys have loved this. Thank you so much for all your patience. I love you all. Thank you for my new subscribers. Keep painting, guys. I love you.